Hi, this is Professor Sheldon Amide at Chicago Kent College of Law. I want to say, say a few things about uh, a very important public employee free speech case, Lane v. Franks, that's going to be argued in the United States Supreme Court on Monday, April the 28th. But first, a very little bit of background. It's long been the rule that public employees, uh, just by virtue of their employment, do not necessarily give up all of their free speech rights. When they speak as citizens on issues of public concern, uh, they are ordinarily protected from employer discipline. Uh, Lane v. Franks is a case that arose out of Alabama involving the director of a uh, youth program at an Alabama community college. During the course of his uh, running the program, he discovered that an Alabama state legislator uh, was a kind of phantom employee. She was drawing a paycheck but doing nothing at all. And when he mentioned it to his superiors, uh, they told him just to leave it alone because they need, among other things, the support of the legislature for this program. Well, thereafter, federal authorities got wind of what the state legislator was doing, and they subpoenaed uh, uh, our public employee, uh, Mr. Lane, to uh, testify before a grand jury, which he did. Federal authorities thereafter uh, prosecuted the state legislator for under federal fraud charges. Uh, she went through two trials, each of which uh, Elaine testified at. She was eventually convicted of federal fraud. And thereafter, uh, Mr. Lane was terminated by the uh, community college authorities. He filed this lawsuit uh, against the particular individual who fired him for both damages and injunctive relief, seeking reinstatement uh, as well as damages, as I say. And uh, he lost at the district court level, the trial level, and also lost at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals level on the ground that the, this kind of testimony arose out of his job responsibilities in that he testified only about his job and therefore he did not testify as a citizen but rather as an employee and therefore he was not protected from employer discipline by the First Amendment. There's also an issue in the Lane v. Franks case about qualified immunity because Lane sued the individual who fired him for damages. And uh, of course, Lane lost in the lower courts on his free speech claim, and he also therefore lost on the ground that the individual defendant was protected by qualified immunity from damages liability. Lane is arguing in the Supreme Court that the Garcetti case in 2006 did in fact clearly establish uh, that f a truthful testimony uh, of the sort that Lane uh, engaged in was citizen speech and on a matter of public concern and was therefore, uh, the law was clearly settled and therefore the individual defendant should not be protected by qualified immunity. Among other things that are interesting is the following, that there have been four circuits that have dealt with the issue and only this one, the 11th Circuit, ruled in this way. Three other circuits have ruled that, in fact, truthful uh, em public employee testimony in grand jury proceedings and criminal trials is indeed protected from employer discipline by the First Amendment. Keep in mind what's really at stake here. What's really at stake is the extent uh, to which public employees can be whistleblowers on behalf of the entire public and uh, testify about matters of public concern. This kind of fraud was clearly a matter of public uh, concern. Uh, it's hard to know how the Supreme Court will turn out on this. My best guess is that it will rule in favor of Mr. Lane because this is really a very straightforward case. It's truthful testimony in a federal criminal fraud uh, trial. The question is how broadly or narrowly the opinion will be written. Uh, this is significant also because 
Uh, it will explain the scope of a very important 2006 Supreme Court decision, Garcetti versus Sabalos, which significantly uh, cut back or seemed to cut back on the scope of public employees' rights by imposing the citizen speech requirement. We will now see for the first time since 2006 what speech as a citizen or citizen speech really means in connection with this kind of truthful testimony.